4th of July weekend, amen, I want to preach on this thought, something worth fighting for, amen, something worth fighting for. As those patriotic songs have stirred our spirits, our patriotic spirits, to help us realize how blessed we are of all the nations upon the face of this earth. Uh, tomorrow is July the 4th, 2022, our national holiday celebrating the birth of this great nation. 246 years ago tomorrow, amen, in the what is now called Independence Hall, the state, the old state house uh, there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We've got a picture of that. Uh, there, right there in that very building, 246 years ago tomorrow, amen, around 50 men, the founding fathers met, and after many, many hours of, of toil and, and conversation and debate and, and, and the heat and the sweating, they didn't have air conditioning back in those days, boys, amen, 246 years ago, they didn't have it. Amen. I don't care what your teachers say. They're lying about a lot of other stuff now. They're trying to revise everything. They did not have air conditioning back then. And so in that room that was hot and sweltering and filled with some of the greatest minds in the world of that day, after a time of contentious debate, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin who arose and calmed the audience and read the Psalms. I think it was 127 Psalms that he read and then he called for a season of prayer. And all of those men hit their knees for a season of prayer for God's guidance and direction. And when those men arose from their knees, amen, um, the, the writer, I believe it was Thomas Jefferson who penned the majority of it. They, they walked out of that hall that day with a document in hand called the Declaration of Independence. A world-changing document, probably other than the Bible itself. No other document ever written by man has so affected the course of human events as that Declaration of Independence. Amen. America had finally declared and officially declared its freedom from Great Britain. By a unanimous vote, amen, everyone voted for it. And that new nation was officially born on that day, July the 4th, 1776. In the final analysis, our founding fathers, ladies and gentlemen, gave us something worth fighting for. They gave us a nation worth fighting for. And uh, uh, since the Revolutionary War, Amen. 1,304,702. That's how many soldiers have given their lives for the defense of this nation since the Revolutionary War to maintain the, the unity of this nation and to keep it intact. Amen. From here all the way around, from the United States of the Civil War all the way around to all of the world wars, Vietnam, Korea, uh, Operation Desert Storm, Afghanistan, all of them. Through 2021, that's how many brave soldiers, amen, have watered the tree of liberty with their life's blood, if you will, and sacrificed their futures, sacrificed their lives. The horror of war. If you ever get a chance to watch the American History Channel, AHC, and you watch some of those documentaries from actual footage of World War I and World War II, my God, what those men went through. We're going to hear from one in a little while in this message on by video, but what they went through, what they endured, fighting over there, amen, an enemy that, that was out to rule the world and destroy the world, but they believed in something, amen, something that was worth fighting for. Sad to say today, I don't know that we have uh, that same commitment and that same patriotism that would be willing to send ourselves, our sons and daughters overseas to fight an enemy that threatened our very existence. And so today, I am proud to be an American citizen. Yes, sir. 
Amen. I'm proud to be a citizen of America. As Brother Austin, I believe, or Brother Paul once said, there's a lot of problems in America today, but I still say that she is the greatest nation on the face of this earth. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir, brother. I am not a citizen of this world. You hear me? We hear this new world order, this new liberal world order, and they're talking about citizens of the world. I'm not a citizen of the world. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Amen. And I'm proud to be one. Can you say amen? Where's old Lee at? Lee Greenwood. He done a good job singing that earlier. There he is over there. He can be Elvis one time and Lee Greenwood the next. He'll know who he is. Amen. He's Brother Trey right in the middle. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. Oh, I'm thankful today to live in a free society, free from tyranny and despotism, free to worship God as we see fit. I was reading this week about the terroristic attacks in, in uh, Sudan and Nigeria and other parts of Africa and how that they are targeting the Christians and saw the pictures of churches that have been burned and, and pastors that have been hacked to death. Church members that were shot down by the, by the military, some say, of even their own country because there's such a hatred, amen, for this gospel. They're not destroying uh, Muslim or uh, Islamic centers. They're not destroying uh, uh, false religion places, but they're attacking the churches, amen, of Christianity. Brother and sister, we today have been given a cause to fight for because even though I am blessed to be a citizen of this great nation. I am more blessed to be a citizen of that heavenly country, to be a Christian, to be called a child of God. Can you say amen? Our, our, our key word today in this sermon is freedom. Amen. Freedom. Oh, thank God for freedom. Aren't you glad that we're free to come here and worship? That we're not having to meet underground? That we're not having, for right now, we have freedom of assembly. We have freedom of speech. We have freedom as pastors and teachers to declare the whole counsel of the word of God. We have that freedom guaranteed by our Bill of Rights. But there are those in Washington and in every state today who would love to silence our freedom of expression and our freedom of speech and our right to bear arms. I'll say it again. Thank God for Donald Trump's presidency and putting those three Supreme Court justices in there. In a week, they have turned this liberal nation on its head, brother. They've got progressives' brains exploding because of the rulings that Supreme Court has made this past week, verifying, certifying the Second Amendment Amendment, certifying the right that a coach has a right to kneel and pray at the 50 yard line on a football field amen rolling back intrusive government policies into people's lives and most of all declaring that America as a federal government is not in the baby killing business anymore that they have removed that and brought it where it ought to be into the state level so like him or lump him I don't care but I say thank God for that man. His time was divine planning to put those three justices on that court. Amen. It wouldn't be where we are today, folks. God uses people to advance his agenda, to advance his kingdom. I got some of you mad right there. That's all right. I read last week where 40% of the Democrats said if this country was invaded by an enemy, they'd flee. They would not stand and fight. 40% of them. I mean, if you don't like it, leave it. Hello? I'll buy them. I'll help buy a ticket. I'll help buy Barbara Streisand's ticket. I'll buy Michael Moore's ticket. I'll buy any of them other loony uh, folks' tickets to get out of here. Amen. They all talk about how bad this country is, but you don't see any of them leaving, do you? 
That's all we heard four years ago. If Donald Trump's elected, I'm leaving, I'm moving, I'm going here and I'm going there. Well, they're still right here soaking it up in the land of the free and the home of the brave, getting richer and richer every day. Praise God, brother, if this nation is so bad, why do people risk 90 miles of shark-infested waters on makeshift rafts to come from Cuba to the shores of Key West? If this nation is so horrible, why is over a million and a half illegal Eagles flooded that border since January 2021. My God, I'm telling you, they're not fighting to get into Russia. They're not fighting to get into communist China. They're not fighting to get into North Korea. They're trying to get into America, the breadbasket of the world, the land where dreams and opportunities can come true. Why? I can tell you why. Thank God for the Declaration of Independence, but that alone has not made us great. It it goes back to our founding when a bunch of pilgrims in some ships landed on the coast off Massachusetts and they sought a land where they could worship God free from government intrusion and they could be what God called them to be and they came to this country looking for God and God has blessed this nation because she's had a strong church and a strong Christian witness if the church ever goes under this nation's going under you hear me the church provides the bedrock the Judeo-Christian faith provides the bedrock for that declaration of independence and the bill of rights to work without Christianity teaching against mob rule and despot rule this nation's going to descend into further anarchy than what it is and when that begins to happen Brother, this thing's got to be held together. Can you say amen? But I, let me get back to this spiritual part today. Oh, thank God, folks, I'm telling you, we've got it so good as Americans. It just makes me sick to my stomach to hear people lamb blasting this country and talking about negative about this country when over a million, 1.3 plus million men gave their lives and women as well as nurses and fighters gave their lives for this country so that me and you could be blessed like we are. Thank God for the freedoms that we have today. But let me tell you also, amen, that our key word is freedom. And Mr. Webster defines freedom as that of being free, independence, civil, or political liberty. I'm thankful for freedom that we can come here and worship today. If you don't like the Pentecostal faith, you can go up the road to the Church of Christ. If you don't like that, you can go to the Methodist. If you don't like that you can go down the road to the Catholic if you don't like that you can go over to the Baptist if you don't like that you can rent you a little storefront and start your own alphabet soup whatever you want to do brother that is freedom if you don't want to be a Christian you can be a Muslim if you don't want to be a Muslim you can be a Jehovah's Witness ain't much difference where they're all headed if you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness hey man you can be a Mormon again they're all riding the same bus hey man somebody but I'm telling you we have the freedom to be that and so we are blessed today to be a free born American citizen but more than that I'm a free born child of God hallelujah washed in the blood baptized in the spirit my name on the heavenly roll waiting on the trumpet to sound and I've got something worth fighting for and I'm not giving it up I'm not surrendering it and I'm not going down without a fight say amen somebody so if I could take Mr. Webster, you know he's a fine guy. Y'all ever met him, Mr. Webster? Need to get acquainted with him. His name's Daniel Webster. Wrote a book filled with a lot of stuff. He'll do you like he done this old boy. He'll educate your ignorance. I'll guarantee you that. So if I could, I could take a little liberty with Mr. Webster's book. And in that definition of freedom where he said being free, independent, civil, or political liberty, I'd like to come in there and put being free, independence, civil, political, or spiritual liberty. Hallelujah. That's what's true freedom. Brother, you don't know true freedom till you get truly set free. 
Can I say it? Come on, somebody. I said, you don't know true freedom until you get truly set free. It'd be terrible to be a prisoner in communist China today. I don't care how much the Bidens love them. They're, me, they're, they're ungodly. They're the most evil source in this world today. They're out to destroy America. And all of you dummies watching TikTok and playing on TikTok, you're giving them your information. You're giving them everything about you. Oh, I said I wasn't going to meddle. Let me hurry. Hey, Man, brother, it'd be bad to be a slave in communist China or to be under that little fat-faced dictator in North Korea. But I can tell you what's even worse is to be a prisoner to sin, a captive of hell, and to know that you didn't have a future beyond this life, to be a prisoner of sin and sorrow, living with no hope of freedom. Listen, let me give you a little history. January the 1st, 1863. President Abraham Lincoln. I read just this week we're in Ivy League College because some idiot complained. So they go in and they take the bust of Lincoln out and they remove the Gettysburg Address. We're tearing it down, folks. You can't tear it down and expect to prosper in the future. Amen. Lincoln was no more a racist than any, he was no racist. He, he gave his life to defend, amen, and break the stranglehold of slavery upon this nation. What a man, what a president, amen. Hope to see that Lincoln Memorial before I die one day if my wife ever get away from her grandbaby. Say amen. I guess I'm gonna have to go Greyhound. Go by myself, Brother George, me and you just may have to go. Hallelujah. Amen. January the 1st, 1863, President Lincoln issued a proclamation that has lived and will live as long as time stands and as long as this nation stands, and it's called the Emancipation Proclamation. Y'all ever studied that in school? Ever heard the Emancipation Proclamation? That's exactly right. And what did that say? That declared America's three years into that civil war that's ultimately gonna take 600,000 plus lives amen from the north and the south the exact number of lives that was taken uh, uh, by the slave owners that's exactly how many slaves died in America 600,000 plus Abraham Lincoln prophesied it when he said life for life blood for blood lash for lash this nation's going to pay its sin debt its slave debt and the nation did when it buried 600 plus thousand of its sons from the north and the south ladies and gentlemen but right in the middle of that war he declares these words that all persons held as slaves are and henceforward shall be free shall be free now that didn't exactly make the chains fall off right then down in the deep south but it gave life it gave a foundation and that freedom would come to pass two years later when the words of that emancipation proclamation set men's bodies and their futures free. What great words, my God, what historic words that will live forever that no man would ever be held in slavery again within the borders of this great nation, that no man would ever be shackled again at the whim of the other to labor at the expense of someone else. Else. Oh, thank God for freedom. But let me tell you of another day, about 2,000 years ago, when the mankind of this world was bound in the slavery of sin and soul bondage, and in the midst of that spiritual holocaust, there stepped the greatest emancipator that this world or any other world will ever know, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came and set foot on planet Earth. He planted his feet on terra firma and one day in that Judean hillside he declared these words. Hey Amen. You want to know about an emancipation proclamation? That's God's emancipation proclamation for every sin, every soul, every sorrow, every bondage, every chain, every prison, every locked door. What did God say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that 
whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My God, you don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to live like an animal. You don't have to live in the filth of sin. There is a life to be lived. There is something that God will give us that is worth fighting for. It is eternal life and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lincoln's words liberated men's bodies and destinies. The words of Christ liberated men's souls and eternity. Woo, hallelujah. I'd hate to know I lived as a slave to sin down here and then die and go to that awful concentration, uh, concentration ca- that at camp call hell. Hallelujah. I'll get it out sooner or later. I'd hate to know that I live to be a hundred years old and bust hell wide open. My God, brother, God's ordained something better for me and you. And Jesus declared war on the devil with those words. He said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh, praise God. I'm so glad today, ladies and gentlemen, that my manifest destiny is right there. Amen. I was born into sin November 25, 1965, but I signed my declaration of independence from King Satan and the empire of ruin on March 19, 1970 when I got born again. Amen. He liberated me from the prison camp of sin. He opened wide the doors. He gave me beauty for ashes. He gave me a robe of pure white dripped in the blood of the lamb. He gave me a new name in heaven. He gave me a new start. He gave me a new heart. He gave me a new future. My God, I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm free. done being a slave I wasn't but 13 but I was bound enough to go to hell you hear me I was a one timer smoked one cigarette one dip a red man one drink a beer one one cigar three puffs hear God my granddaddy broke me from cigars. I said, that smells good. He said, well, here, boy. I'm a little fat 11-year-old. I said, really, Papa? Yeah, here. He said, put it in your mouth. I did. Roll it around. I did. He said, now I want you to take a deeper breath as you can and suck on that thing as hard as you can. I said, really? I didn't know Papa's would do that to you. But he's teaching me a life lesson. <laughs> he's teaching me a cigar lesson, tobacco lesson. He said, I said, how, Papa? He said, just get ready. He said, get ready. And he said, Go. and I did. Man, I had that cigar. I mean, it's a big one, boy. It's long. It's smoking smoke signals to the reservation. I mean, it was doing it. I sucked on that thing. He said, more, more. My eyes about to bust out. He said, now hold it. Hold it. Boy, you better not turn that loose. I won't give you no more Milky Ways. Son, I'm gonna hold it or die. I'm holding that and God is my witness. I'm standing there. First time in my life my world ever turned upside down. Second time was when I met that girl over there, hallelujah. But the first time was when I got that belly full, lung full, brain full, body full of cigar smoke and he wouldn't let me let it out. And I I think it started coming out my ears and my nose. Brother, all I know is I started getting on rubber legs. My stomach started, somebody said, did you have have birds in your stomach? No, I had eagles in my stomach, man. And they were all sick and puking and throwing up. And I'm sitting there and I'm just, 
just fall to my knees. And that thing blows out. He reaches over, picks it up, stomps it out, says, I don't guess you'll never smoke another cigar. Hallelujah. Hey, man, I said, I ain't gonna smoke nothing. I don't even want them candy cigarettes anymore. Y'all remember them candy cigarettes? Y'all don't, but we had them back then. I said, I don't even want them anymore. Praise God. Oh, I'm telling you, sin will make you sick on your stomach. Sin will make you wish you'd have never been born. Sin will make you wish for another do-over. And guess what the good news is? That through Jesus Christ, we can do over. And we can get a new start. Hallelujah. We can declare that I'm done being a slave to the devil. I'm free. How am I free? Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Hey, man, I'm free. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Woo, if you're glad you're free, give the Lord a hand clap. And I never put another tobacco utensil in my mouth again. One dip of snuff. That stuff's so nasty. I said, ain't no girl ever going to kiss me with this in my mouth. Hey, baby, give me some sugar. Some boys do get lucky, though. They find somebody to kiss anybody. I mean, you spit something out so nasty, if it land on a fly, it'd kill him. Bulldog, I mean a bullfrog, spit it on a bullfrog, he'll go jump in the mud hole, just get clean. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. Some of y'all have no imagination whatsoever. Praise God. Amen. Everybody couldn't be raised in Clare, Mississippi. Glory to God. Listen, we're free today. You know, we need to act free. You know, they tell me, I've never been in prison either, but they tell me that folks be in prison for so long, they can come out and they want to go right back because they don't know how to function as free people. They don't know how to function in a free society. They're so used to being bound up and cooped up and everything like that. Amen. I, I've seen that happen in the spiritual. They just didn't go on to the fullness thereof of the blessing of God and the fullness of God. Amen. So tomorrow, this nation is going to wave flags, pledge allegiance, and sing Star Spangled Banner and right so that is our birthright and our heritage as Americans yes sir but just as sure as there's that tree of liberty for this nation amen there's that old rugged cross that was watered one time for everybody by the blood of Jesus Christ for that son of God that came and declared that whosoever believeth on me though he die yet shall he live and never die hallelujah thank God the symbol of my spirit spiritual freedom and liberty today is not the assemblies of God constitution and bylaw amen it is that old rugged cross because of that cross I'm free I'm free indeed no more chains of sin are shackles on me I can lift up holy hands and worship God from a pure heart I can run in the spirit and not grow weary I can mount up with wings as he Eagles. I can walk and not faint. That is the birthright of the child of God set free by the blood of Jesus. Woo. Come on now. That cross declares that whosoever, see, for many, many decades, that Lady Liberty stood in that harbor on Ellis Island in New York City a welcoming sight to refugees, immigrants to come across that ocean, that Atlantic Ocean to seek a better life in America. Many of them died getting there. That cross, ladies and gentlemen, stands as the greatest symbol of freedom and a better life than anything else in this world ever has or ever will represent. Come on, somebody. It's all right to get excited about the cross. Amen, amen, hallelujah. He, I hate to tell my Catholic friends, he's not still on that cross. Dear God, take him off that cross. He went to that cross one time. He's never going back to that cross again. Amen, he purchased salvation for whosoever will. Praise God. From the uttermost to the guttermost, from the depths of the sea to land and shore, this cross is the greatest symbol of true freedom. 
<coughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross. I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. The light of God penetrated our dark, sin-covered soul and let us know there's a better way. You don't have to be a sinner, the property of the devil. You can be a child of God. You don't have to go the way of the world and wind up in hell. You don't have to live like an animal, reduced down to demonic possession, addictions, horrifying situations. There's a dignity in that cross. Everywhere that cross is gone, it has elevated men and women. You hear me? It elevated them around this world from cannibals and baby killers to God worshipers. It elevated men and women's standard of living. It, that cross through its effects and the teaching of that word brought holiness and hygiene to generations and nations around this world. That cross through its effect educated those that man said was not to be educated, the women and the children. It gave value to you ladies. I'm telling you, brother, that ERA symbol, that ain't nothing for you. That's of the devil. You hear me? This is your symbol right here, ladies. The the old rugged cross, my God. Hey, man, you don't have to have a feminine voice to speak for you. You've got a cross that speaks for you and teaches you how to be a lady of grace and a lady of character and a young lady of dignity. You don't have to live like a harlot and a prostitute. You don't have to be passed around from man to man and your life made a shambles. No, sir, that cross will elevate you up and make you sit in high places in Christ Jesus and to give you a life of value you are not chattel you are not property you're the daughter of God everywhere that cross is gone it's brought light to pagan darkness I read a story one time of a guy he was an anthropologist he was visiting some of the former cannibal islands down off the coast of New Zealand back in the 70s. He was an agnostic, an unbeliever. He was sitting around that fire with all the chiefs of those islands and the discussion came to Christianity and he noticed one of them had a Bible. He looked at them and said, you don't believe that, do you? See, he's the learned man. Nothing wrong with being learned. But you can be learned in this world and ignorant to God. He looked at them with all of his degrees. He said, you don't believe that book, do you? That's nothing but a bunch of fiction. Nothing but a bunch of fairy tales. None of it's true. And he said, that old chief holding that Bible looked at that man and he said, white man, you better be glad this book is true because if it wasn't, you'd be boiling in our pots for supper right now. But because of this book, it has set us free from ancient traditions of cannibalism and eating the foreigners that came to our shore. This book has made us to love you and to welcome you and make you safe in our village. He said, do not tell me this book is not true because I've watched it in my life and in the lives of my people all Oh, I'm telling you, brother, this Bible is more than a book. It is a living force. It is a living organism of God. It is a living power that invades everything that opposes it. And sooner or later, it brings it down. Ask Lenin. Ask Khrushchev. Ask Hitler. Ask the despots of this world. And they, where are they? They are laying in a grave, eaten by worms and rotted away, and live only in the annals of history. But but God's truth still marches on. The word of God, the Bible, is still the number one bookseller in the world. Hallelujah. Infidels have pledged to eradicate it. They pledged to get rid of it. But people give their lives to secure a copy of God's word. Hallelujah. Brother, it is the living word of God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I'm about to close. 
I'm on my end, next to my end of my next to my last page. Ooh. Hallelujah. You got that, Nate, didn't you? He ready. Nate said, bring it on, brother. I'm ready. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it. Why it is so? He gave us something worth fighting for. And today, my spiritual Independence Day theme is this. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is now, therefore now. Say now. Look to your neighbor and say now. Now I'm saved. If you're not saved, you can be right for right this service here. There's therefore now no condemnation, no guilt, no plague, no charge following, no valid arrest warrants out for you. There's now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not under condemnation today? I am what he says I am. I have what he says I have. Some of y'all don't know if you want to get with this or not. As Americans, we define our liberties and our freedoms as proclaimed in the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. I know we got these idiots today saying we need to get rid of the Bill of Rights. We need to rewrite it and all that stuff. Are you kidding me? Don't you let anybody alive in America today get anywhere close to that Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights to rewrite it. Conservative, liberal, Republican, Democrat, anybody. We ain't got enough sense to do that. We are so prejudiced. We're so, we're so colorblind. We're, we're, we're so, we, we've lost sight of the goal. That, that just won't never work, as my mama would say. I just ain't never going to work. Say amen, somebody. As citizens... Come on, Sister Beth, and get ready. As citizens of that heavenly country, say heavenly country. See, we have dual citizenship. Oh, as y'all know that. We have dual citizenship. That's right. We're a citizen of this nation by birth, our first birth. And we're a citizen of heaven by our second birth. Whew. And the good thing is my second country does not send me a tax bill. He just says, pay your tithe, <laughs> give in the offering, but I'm not sending, and there's no IRS department up there in that second country. Whew, I don't even know if there's going to be any IRS agents up there. They better get right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I told you I'd say for years before I ever believed math teacher would make it to heaven. So, I mean, if a math teacher is going to have trouble, how much more would an IRS agent have? Come on, somebody. They don't send, I just got my renewals for my vehicles this month, BNP and July, you know, and all that. Anybody want to give an offer and all help is accepted. I'm telling you. Yeah, you too, you and you too, y'all. We all need an offering. All God's children need an offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That country where no twilight shadows deepen. See, we define our spiritual liberty and freedom from this book. This book tells us what that symbol means, tells us what that symbol stands for. See, our, our king does not sit upon a golden throne. He hung on a wooden cross. His kingdom was not of this world. And so, therefore, our life is not derived from this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Caleb, we don't belong to this world. You hear me? We're in a fight, son. We're in a spiritual fight. Our standing is, for example, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Paul said, you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him. I like these next words. Having forgiven you all. Say it. All trespasses. <laughs> he went further than that. He expunged our record. 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The law said the soul that sinneth shall surely die. That was an ordinance, for example, against us. But he blotted that out because it was contrary to us and took it out of the way. He didn't just throw it in the dirt. He nailed it to his cross and said it's paid for. Hallelujah. Woo, aren't you glad you don't have to earn so great a salvation? You don't have to give your way into so great a salvation? You don't have to be born into a royal family? No, no. All you got to do is call on him. Amen. So now, based on that, I'm saved and I'm a soldier. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I got something we're fighting for. I want to close this service this morning before we get to the altar. In just a moment, Brother Mike's going to bring all these lights down, going to cut these sconce lights off. And you're going to watch a video. Many of you have heard the name B.H. Clendenin from this pulpit. One of the greatest men of God to ever walk this earth. Since 1902, he was born, I believe, 1902. Went home to be with the Lord a few years ago after a battle with cancer. Young people, you'll never see anybody in your life that any more resembles the Apostle Paul. This man took the gospel to 150-something nations. The school of Christ, you've heard him talked about by men like Brother Daryl Turner, Duke Downs, Wayne Romag, Stephen McKay, other men. We know these men, our church have been blessed by these men's ministry because of Brother B.H. Clendenin. Because my wife and I were privileged for several years to sit under Brother Clendenin's ministry at the Easter convention and camp meetings. And in those camp meetings, we met these great men and women of God. He left behind for posterity a strong Pentecostal conviction and churches planted around this world. At 70 years old, he and his wife retired from Victory Temple in Beaumont, a church which he founded and pastored, I believe, for over 30 some odd years. At 70 years old, when that wall came down in Russia, he and Sister Clendenin packed up sold their house, moved lock, stock, and barrel to Russia and worked for God. That's the time that Brother Duke was over there and Brother Romag and others and God working signs and miracles like the book of Acts. This is the kind of man I'm talking about. And on this July the 4th weekend, I want to play this video that they had posted. Some of you may have watched it on Facebook, but I want to play it today. And I pray it challenges and stirs your spirit as it did mine. Go ahead and bring all the lights down. For a man to be a soldier, it requires faithfulness on the part of that individual. Whether he's a soldier in the army of the service of this great nation or a soldier in the army of Christ, it requires faithfulness. A man must be sold on the thing that he's fighting for. He must be brought to the knowledge that this is what I was born for. In 1942, right after Pearl Harbor, I enlisted in the Marine Corps in the post office in San Antonio, Texas. I stood before a captain of the Marines and said, I will. Now, the second attribute of a soldier is courage. É a coragem. He must be courageous. Ele deve ser corajoso. But that courage is born out of conviction. Mas a coragem ela nasce da convicção. See, there's a difference 
between being afraid há uma diferença entre estar com medo and being a coward. e ser um covarde. Cowards never make soldiers. Os covardes nunca são soldados. It takes more courage to é, be right é necessário mais coragem para estar correto than it does to fight a war. do que é para lutar em uma guerra. Courage is born out of a coragem ela nasce com a so, a soldier must be faithful He must be courageous under every circumstance. But the third thing required la troisième chose qui est demandé is discipline. Est la discipline. Discipline is a bad word in this generation. La discipline, c'est un mot qui est très mal accepté dans notre génération. This is a very unbridled age. And nous sommes dans un âge où tout le monde fait ce qu'il veut sans discipline. Rebellion is rampant in our world. La rébellion est rampante partout dans notre monde. Every man does right, does what's right in his own eyes. Chaque individu fait ce qui lui semble bon à ses propres yeux. This, this is, this is characteristic of the age we live in. Ceci c'est la caractéristique de l'âge dans lequel nous vivons. It's an undisciplined time. C'est un temps où la discipline est rejetée. Inmediatamente después de que el entrenamiento estuvimos ahí en esta isla, era el primer golpe de regreso al enemigo. Casi tres años en el Pacífico. Viví como un animal. Dormía en hoyos. Comíamos lo que encontrábamos. Got shot once. Nos disparaban de vez en cuando. As a soldier, you're not going to stay in a Hilton hotel. You'll suffer hardship. You'll have a chance to fight. And you'll be a part of the greatest victory this world ever knew anything about. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're a good soldier, I can tell you now, you'll be a part of the greatest victory this world ever knew anything about. Oh, we've tried to keep the young people of our churches with ice cream parties, build $100,000 gyms, amen. If we have stuffed their pocket full of trucks, put them on a street corner to face the devil and to do battle with the enemy, we'd have never lost them. I said we'd have never lost them. If we'd have put them in the battle, thank God we'd have saw something in their lives. I said something in their lives. It said of Joseph, They put him in that dungeon until iron came into his soul. Garibaldi, marching through Italy, came through Florence. Whole crowd of young people hanging on a street corner. He said to them, follow me. They said, what's in it for us, Mr. Garibaldi? He said, cold nights, hungry stomachs, bleeding feet, and a part of the greatest victory Italy has ever known. And the young people followed him to the man. Let me tell you something, folks. I appreciate this country. And it's taking care of those that need to be took care of. But you can care that too far. There ain't nobody wants to die for a welfare state. Thank God I want to fight for something that gives me an opportunity of greatness. I first joined that Marine Corps, and I got to get on with this. They didn't have no plan to get you home. You just outlived the war. They'd bring you home. 33 months. We come off the island of Peleliu. Out of my battalion, only 80 of us able to walk back aboard that ship. I mean, all but 80 of us had died or been maimed up and crippled. We fought our way to the airport. We came back along that road. 400 boys, I knew every one of them with their first name, are waiting to be fed to the sharks. That's right, waiting to be dumped out there in that sea. Oh, listen, I, we, we had been out there for 33 months. We came back to our regrouping area, and, and when we got back there, we got into our tents, we're waiting on replacements. 
I was sitting in the tent one evening kind of late, and I heard my, my name sounded in the street. Sergeant Clendenin in the company street. Others had called. We went out there and fell in that company street. That old captain said to us, they, they put in a new plan while we was at war. Congress passed the bill that says if you got enough points, you can go home. And we've discovered you fellas have got enough points, you can go home. Amen. You can go home now. Can you be on the docks by 8 o'clock in the morning? But well, I can tell you right now, at 5 o'clock, I was sitting down there. Amen. I was sitting on the dock 5 o'clock in the morning. Brother, I'm a going home. I've been out here in this hell for nearly three years. I'm going home. I, I, we aboarded that old freighter. They just looked like a cattle car. They put bunks down the bottom. Hell wasn't six feet from where I slept all the way home. Amen. There's hot, hot, folks sick, everything else. 28 days dodging them submarines. When I got on that ship, I stretched out them trousers, washed them, put them under there. I slept on them all the way home. You know what I was doing? Pressing them. I'm going home. Got to look good. If you never washed anything in salt water, you don't know what it is. I washed them shirts, that cap, that field scarf. Every morning, I'd pop them out, sleep on them another night. I'd go up and look every day. One morning, I'd come up on deck. There's a shoreline out there. I said to that soldier, boy, where is that? He said, man, that's California. My God. Heaven won't ever look any better. I said, heaven won't look, ever look any better. Oh, I hollered down that hole, boys. Come on up here. It's California. Thank God wasn't long. There's that old Golden Gate Bridge. We're sailing right under it. Then it come over the loudspeaker. It said, all of you Marines that are returning home from the battlefield, you're going to be the first ones off. I was a senior non-commissioned officer. I was in charge of that bunch of men. I said, fellas, get ready. I put on them trousers. Looked like I slept in them. But I pressed them, brother. I'm home. I tied that field scarf. Looked like a shoestring around my neck. I'd shine, brother. I'd shine them bogans. We fell out on that deck and stood there. Listen, we stood there. And when it dropped that anchor, they said to us, now you can disembark. We fell in, and when we got to the edge of that gangplank, I looked over there, and there's a thousand-piece Navy band. Oh, my God, you never saw such a band. And the minute our feet hit that ramp, they struck up from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. We'll fight our country's battle on the land is on the sea. I march down the street of San Francisco, that Navy band playing, thousands of people welcomed me home. I said I'd go back tomorrow. It was worth it all, brother. I'd go back tomorrow. I'd go back and go through it all again. Well, let me tell you in closing, about 33 years ago, I climbed aboard the old shipper's iron. I started out for the port of heaven. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. It hasn't always been easy. I'm flapping spiritual foxholes. I know what it is not to have but one suit of clothes and my wife back there have one dress. There have been a lot of times it has been easier to quit than it would to go on. Now I'm going to tell you, it's about to drop our anchor and heaven's band is going to strike up the anthem. My God, folks. My God, folks. My God, folks. We're about to go home. We're about to go home. We're going to march down those streets of gold.
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, that ought to stir your soul. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. Amen. Amen. I wanted to share that. It might not have done for you what it did for me, but it just touched my heart. Amen. That old general, thank God, fought that enemy on, in the Philippines and come on and fought that spiritual enemy. Amen. And now he's in the presence of God. We're about to join him. You hear me? This thing's about to wind up, folks. We're about to leave out of here. Amen. Y'all not near as excited as them folks he was preaching to. I can tell you that. Amen. So well, you ain't clandestine either. I know that. Hallelujah. But we got these musicians up here, and they're good too. Amen. We're going home. But until then, we've got something worth fighting for. Amen. I said something worth. How many is going to stay in this fight? It's going to get hard. Amen. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take courage. It's going to take commitment. It's going to get harder than it's ever been. But we got to stay in the fight. Amen. We got to stay on the battlefield for my Lord. I've asked Sister Bethany to them to sing this song this morning. If you're committing, if you're re-enlisting this morning in the army of God, I want you to come stand around this altar right now. Amen. Come on, preacher today, July the 3rd, 2022. I'm re-enlisting. I'm recommitting. I'm not resigning. I'm re-signing for the glory of God. I'm going to stay in the battle until it's over. I'm going to stay in the battle. Lift your hands and tell him, Lord, I'm here. I'm here. Amen. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going to war the good warfare. 